Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Give him thanks because I believe these verses of scriptures here <clears throat> right now has a lot to do with us right now. Sit still. Be still. And let God move. God not only wants to, but God will move in your life. <clears throat> now all God had done for Ruth and Naomi, this was the first series, the fourth series, we have one more to go, was about to come to a conclusion. God had done so much now, it's up to Ruth to follow her mother, her mother-in-law. Follow her mother-in-law's instructions. We are to follow God's instructions today. <coughs> Just like it was back then. We are to follow the instructions that the Bible tells us. Keep this in mind. God can do so much. <coughs> then it's up to us to do our part. And that's very important. We have to do our part. Just like the apostles did after the resurrection of Jesus. We have a Let's say a job to do, and that's to share our faith to others. Don't get in the way of God. Give God the freedom to act. Give God the freedom to move. Give God the freedom to carry out His will for your life. Everyone here this morning is very important. When God said it was finished on the cross of Calvary, it also means it's finished for you and I today, right now, as believers. Amen. I see so many believers today who don't understand or believe what it meant to say when Jesus said it was finished. We have to pick up the cross and follow Jesus. Give Him control of our lives. And He wants to. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless each one I believe to be a, to receive a blessing, we need to be a blessing as well. Praise God. Now let's follow Ruth as she follows her mother-in-law. And this is very important. Verse 18. Verse 18 says, Then said she, that's Naomi talking to Ruth, Sit still, my daughter. We have to sit still and give God an opportunity to work. Ruth told Naomi all that Boaz did for her. Are we telling others all that God has done for us? I believe it's time. It's time to tell others what Jesus has done for you and what Jesus is doing for you. I know I, I get here early. I've been praying early in the morning from about 3 o'clock on. I pray. I say, God, you have done so much for me. When I fell and hit the slab of the church we was building, when I had very, very serious cancer, you touched me. And so many other times you have cut, touched me. Now, God, you have done all that for a reason. Has God touched you? Has God touched you out there on the airwaves? If the answer is yes, if God has brought you through something, it's for a reason and it's for a purpose. It is to give Him glory, but it's also to give us the physical strength that we need, that we need to be able to get through this life victorious. Nothing was left out. As, as, as Ruth was sharing with Naomi, nothing was left out. She told she told Naomi everything. You know, God wants us to be honest with Him. God knows everything about us. But He wants us to know everything about ourselves. And that's very important. Sometimes we are our worst enemy. Well, don't you think it's about time to give it to God and let God have it? You know, I love the book of John. Verses 1 and 2. I love it. Jesus is the instrument of all creation. He created everything out of nothing. Don't you think he can take care of whatever situation you might be facing? This nation is facing a very serious crisis right now. Very serious. But I believe 
I believe there's going to be a lot of good things to come out of this. Amen. And I believe that. We need to pray. We need to seek the face of God. We don't need to be foolish now. I don't believe in being foolish. I don't believe in doing that at all. But we have to say, God is here. Now, God, I believe you're going to do something with it. Now, why don't we say the same thing about our life? God, I'm here. And I want to serve you. I want to serve you. I want to be part of you. And I see today, so many believers don't even understand what I'm saying. Well, maybe. <clears throat> just maybe. We need to learn a little bit more. And I could use some more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm not good at camera. <laughs> I am Brother Gio. I'm proud of it. Don't be in a hurry. Don't get in a hurry to do something. Don't be in a hurry to do something. Do you know? I don't know about y'all when you was coming up. But words have a tendency to linger in someone's heart for a lifetime. We need to be careful what we say and try to help and lift people up. Amen? Amen. Sit still. This seems to be a simple request. But in reality, it's one of the hardest things to do. I don't know about y'all, but when I was coming up, me and my wife, we had four kids. I'm talking about four babies. And if you want to go nuts real quick, lock yourself up in a room with four babies. <laughs> Amen. You will, if you have hair, don't worry about going to a barber or a beauty uh, uh, salon. You won't have any after a week. <clears throat> Some of these people have been locked up for a month. They've got to be going stir crazy. Amen. You know what I mean. Yes, you do. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. But sit still is a hard request. But God wants us to sit still as he's moving, not only across this nation, but I'll share this with people too, whether they want to hear it or not. As long as the United States support Israel, God's going to support the United States. The moment the United States can support Israel, that's going to be higher to support the United States. Amen. Amen. A lot of people don't want to hear it, but I'll tell you what, God wants to hear it. And God, I'll say it again, but I can't remember everything I just said. But I believe it anyway. Praise God. Give my hand. <laughs> now let me ask a question. Don't you think y'all been you, Ruth? Don't you think she knew her? But there, here, here's them. Is that you, Ruth? All right, this is what I believe. That Ruth had a certain glow about her. Because the presence of God just saturated her soul. Amen. She came out of hard times. Here she is. <clears throat> Here she is with a glow about her. Isn't that great? Don't, don't you think people should see a glow about us? Do we have Jesus or what? Amen. Amen. Do we have Jesus? Be still until you know things were changing. Things are changing for us right now. Things are changing in my life right now. I know she even got up earlier than I did this morning. She's watching this right now on whatever y'all watching it on. <clears throat> Praise God. She's watching. And she's going to come up here and she's going to give some words up here. And it won't be long. I believe by faith. Amen. Until you know, Ruth and Naomi came back to Naomi's country empty-handed. They were empty-handed. How many people today are empty-handed? How many people today are hurting right now financially, spiritually? They need a little hope. They need a little help. And Jesus Christ is the one who gives it. Jesus Christ will not leave you. You put Jesus first. You put Jesus first, and Jesus will put you first. You, you, you say, Lord, here I am. 
Use me the way you want to use me. What I have is yours because you have given it to me. Nothing belongs to me. It all belongs to you. Now I want to give it back. I want to give it back. Ruth gave everything she had to Naomi. The only thing that Ruth had was herself. But she attached to Naomi. And she was right there for Naomi. She was gleaming the field for Naomi. Now, now, God is putting something in her hands. She was faithful with nothing, but with nothing what she had, she gave. Come on, people. A lot of people need to hear that. They say, God, if you give me this, I'll give you that. They don't realize God has given everything to you already. Now, God was going to return the faithfulness to Ruth. God's going to do the same thing for us. He's going to do the same thing for you. How many here is going through a hard time? If you're just raise your hand, nobody can see you. If you're going through a hard time, God knows that. And I believe just like the blessings that was coming here, that the same blessings are going to be going to you. I want to offer y'all hope. And that hope is in none other than Jesus Christ. Amen. Put your faith in Jesus. All you have to do is say, Lord, I come to you. I repent. I believe you are who you say you are. And I believe that through you, through your blood, I can have eternal life. Amen. But now you've got to go further. You've got to be submissive to the Holy Spirit. And let God lead you. Amen. Amen. I believe that. Be still and tell you no. God now was putting something in their hands. Ruth found favor with Boaz. Her reputation followed her. Now, God is blessing both of the ladies through Boaz. God will do the same thing for you. Amen. Whatever it is, call out. God's going to take care of it. Call out. I remember when my wife was in the uh, rehab, me and Melissa, her daughter, youngest daughter, said, Dad, I don't know. I said, I, said, I don't know neither. I don't know if she's coming out of here. Well, guess what? <laughs> She's coming out and she's strong. She's getting strong every day. Praise the Lord. Amen. So why don't you just pray a prayer for yourself right now? Say, Lord, I can use a little help. And by faith, I believe you're going to give me that help. Amen. You're going to give me that help, Lord. I believe no matter what, no matter what, my faith and trust is in you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Keep this in mind. You remain faithful. And God is a faithful God, and God will bless you. Boaz had a reputation of keeping his word. And that's one thing my dad told me when I was knee high to a billy goat back in Taylorville, Louisiana, St. Landry Parish, Cajun Country. He said, Son, you're no better than you were. You're no better than you were. And I try to live up to that. When I say something, I do the best that I can do to do what I said I was going to do. Amen. Amen. And there are people out here, y'all are doing the same thing. But I have to remain faithful to my word. And I'm going to do my best to remain faithful. Hallelujah. You remain faithful to God. Just like Boaz, he had a reputation, like I said before, of keeping his, it's very important to keep your word. Boaz would not rest until the matter was taken care of. And this matter would be taken care of properly. No loose ends would be left undone. No loose ends, praise God. Such reliable people stand out in any age of culture. 
And we're going to see people stand out for their faith in Jesus Christ. Somebody might say, yeah, brother, you don't know about the hard times. I said, oh, oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. But I also know what God can do when you put your trust and faith in Him. Amen. A man of His Word will do what He says He will do. A man of His Word, a woman of her Word, will do what she says, or what He says. And also, the matter will be concluded. This matter with this virus that we're facing today, and it's very deadly. Now, I'm not taking nothing away from it. But this too will come to a conclusion. This too will be written in the history book. Mm -hmm. This too, if Jesus tarries before he raptures us up, will be studied in years to come. But this too will pass. This is not going to be the norm. This too shall pass. My faith in Jesus is this, that we will be a stronger country, a stronger believers through this than we were before. And I believe that. Amen. That's Amen. a positive side of what I see here. Amen. Because my faith and trust is in Jesus. Amen. Jesus says he'll never leave nor forsake us. Amen. And that means exactly what it says. Right. Jesus is a man of his word. He wrote divine man. He wrote the word of God. And if he says he'll never leave nor forsake me, that means he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And I believe that. I believe that. Amen. Many times I go to bed at night and I don't know. But this I do know. God is in control. Amen. And I have to depend totally upon him. Just like Ruth and Naomi. They depended. And the matter will be concluded. Naomi knew Boaz. She knew what he said. And what he said, she knew he would do it. Mm -hmm. Can we have the same faith in Jesus? Amen. We need to have that faith right now. Right now. Right now. Don't put your faith in a man. Don't put your faith in a government. Put your faith in the one who controls everything. Amen. And that's Jesus. Yes, I'm a Jesus freak. I am a Jesus freak. And I'm a mighty proud of it. If you're proud of it too, hallelujah. hallelujah. There you go. We all freaks. We all freaks for Jesus. Hallelujah. And we need to understand that God was ready, what he was getting ready to bless us right now through Ruth and through Boaz and through Naomi. Don't let your energy, don't let your spiritual energy or your physical energy be wasted. Apply your spiritual energy and your physical energy in prayer. Pray, 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 pray. The life of Naomi and Ruth was about to make a complete turnaround. Y'all understand where we're going with this? God gave me these messages way before this virus. And this message is to give us hope right now. We saw Ruth and Naomi destitute, leaving a country to go into another country. They had nothing. I don't even know if they had sand. They had nothing but the clothes on their back and whatever that was. They left. Now, they were obedient to God. Now, God was going to share them with His love and His mercy and His grace and His blessings. That's important for us to understand today. When you're obedient to God, He is going to bless you. He is going to bless you. No matter what, these two ladies left poverty. They entered in by faith. They entered in. Now we see God blessing them through Boaz and by Ruth faithfulness. Amen. The same can apply to us today, right now. We need to start claiming this. We need to start saying, quit saying, oh, pitiful, poor me, and start saying, I am highly favored in the name of the Lord. I am highly favored 
Amen. I might not have it now, but I got news. It's on its way and it's coming. It's coming to me. It's coming to me by faith, I believe. And I put my obedience to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> That's very important. You ever heard of people say, well, that person is sold out? Well, maybe that person is sold out, but I'm sold out to Jesus. And I won't, no matter where you're at, whatever country you're in, I don't care where you're at. You sell yourself out to Jesus. Now you got to do what Jesus tells you to do. I want y'all to keep in mind right now, right here and right there, that's going out on the airway. Ruth, when she came into this foreign country, she didn't look for somebody to support her. She was there to support Naomi. She didn't look for a man with money. She didn't look for any of that humbug. She looked for the one and the only one that could help her. Let me share this with you. Don't I say it again. Don't live, don't, don't, don't live a negative life and expect it to be positive. Don't, don't live in sin and expect you to be blessed. Amen. I'm here to tell y'all that right now. Right now. Right now. Don't live in a cesspool and think you're going to smell good when you come out. Amen. That's an impossibility. Put your faith and trust in Jesus and cut all this humbug out Amen. and start saying, Jesus, you are the reason I'm serving you. I want you. I want everything you have. If I have to wear ragged clothes, I'll wear ragged clothes. If you want to put whatever you want to put on me, I don't care what it is. Whatever it is is what I want because I want to serve you. <coughs> I think I messed up. Vocal cords up for hollering. Woo! I like to holler now. Praise God. So right now, right now, wherever you're at, right now, if you want to, listen to me. Why don't you just, why don't you just <clears throat> put your hand on your heart right now and say, Lord, <clears throat> I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. But through your, through your blood, through your mercy and your grace, you have forgiven me. And Lord, I want to follow you. I want to be obedient to you. I give you my life <clears throat> right now in Jesus' name. If you said this prayer, brothers and sisters, you're saved. You're ready for the blessings that God has for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.